Let's look at one last example. Throughout the year, we may notice the sun rises at slightly different times each day, with the longest days in the summer and the shortest in the winter. This happens gradually, and if we were to plot the sunrise each day over the course of the year, we might actually notice the graph would look sinusoidal. Let's take a look at some typical sunrise times on the first day of each month of the year. If we follow the sunrises, we may notice that the changes aren't exactly linear. In other words, the change in sunrise times from month to month are different. Let's look at June and July, for example. In one whole month, the sunrise time only changed two minutes. Whereas if we look at October to November, we notice a whopping hour difference. This actually makes this a perfect use case for a sinusoidal model. Recall that at the peaks and troughs, or maximum and minimums, of a sine wave, we see the y-axis changes very little. However, when we're near the midpoints of a sine wave, the y-axis changes very quickly. Thus, we can derive a sine equation to represent this situation. So, taking the y-axis as the time of day in hours, and using our x-axis as the day of the year, we might draw a sine wave that looks something like this. As we can see, the sine wave repeats after 365 days. It also has a minimum right in the middle of the year, around June and July, and its maximum around the end beginning of the year, which is what we would expect. Note that sometimes reading these graphs might be a bit tricky, because we're given the hours in decimal form. If we want to convert to the 60 minute scale, we just need to perform a quick calculation. Say for example we were reading this graph and we wanted to know the sunrise on day 70. We would draw a line up from 70 to the curve and then across where it intersects to our y-axis. We could estimate this point to be about 7.5 hours. Fortunately, this is an easier number because we know 7.5 hours to be 7.30. But how do we actually calculate that? Well, we just take the decimal, in this case 0.5, and we multiply it by the number of minutes in one hour, which is 60. That's going to give us 30 minutes, and then we can just use the whole number, in this case 7, as our hours.